Hi Javier, found your channel at the beginning of the year and love your videos. I own my home in, well, let's exclude the city, but curious if I can afford to upgrade my house in uh, Temple, Texas. My husband is a veteran, so he qualifies for a VA Loan and Homestead Act, which means no property taxes, amazing. Goal is to pay off credit card debts next year as well as build savings. Would love your guidance on how much to save down payment closing costs and of course, can they afford to buy a house? We got all their information here. Thank you so much to Van for sending me this email. And of course, if you guys wanna be considered for a future email, you guys know what you need to do. Just email a contact at JavierVidania.com. Uh, my contact info is not working because OBS got updated, but hey, I'm sure Zeke is gonna put a fancy uh, in old English contact I have every done all over my face right now. So let's talk about if this person should be able to afford a home. So their information are as follows. I have to use my mouse like a barbarian because uh, once again, it doesn't work. For starters, their income is about $70,000 a year or $5,750 a month net is what they gave me. They did not give me a gross number. However, um, if we get that net number, which is 5750 and we divide it by 0.75 we get 7666 if if the net 75% of their gross then we're going to assume that their gross is going to be I don't know uh 7666 this is a rough guess once again because we don't actually know it we're just kind of using math and assuming some things credit score is between 746 to 700 so i noticed he gave me two scores um i would love if you guys can send me your three scores so i because basically lenders will use your mid score so in this case since you only gave me two scores i'm assuming they're in the mid like 720 715 range around there and of course they gave me their information on their property and according to what well, they said they have been completely paid off and according to Remax, Zillow, and Realtor.com, it ranges of a net profit between 184 to 240. So I'm gonna put 244, but I'm really gonna focus around $200,000. They sent me their debts, they sent me their bills, and all that information. So let's see if we can crush some home buying dreams today. Let's figure out their situation first. Um, so. A lot of times when people are looking to sell or you know get into another home my first priority is hey do we have to sell it i know that's insane when when will a realtor ever say that but here's the thing if you can hold on to your property and keep it as a long-term rental even if you know making a few hundred bucks a month i would rather you do that you only should sell in, in extreme situations where you're like you need the money or it just makes financial sense for you to do that. Trust me, I made the mistake before where I've you know had a house for two or three years and I decided to sell it and make you know pennies, ten, twenty thousand dollars. Or if I would have figured it out and kept it as a rental, you know I would have made hundreds of thousands of dollars. So trying to you know prevent you from making the same mistakes I have. So they told they're telling me they have a total savings amount of ten thousand dollars, but they have about a equity position of two hundred k. So um, first and foremost, let's figure out what they can buy in temple texas um i according to what they're looking for they're looking for a four bedroom home two bathroom with that's at least two stories so i already found one i like but i actually didn't look at the two story part so let me see if that makes it a little better I must be really dumb because I'm not seeing a two story thing anywhere. So I guess this is it. So kind of just eyeballing it. Um, or, you know, I mean, there's some really nice houses in Temple, Texas. Shout out to you guys. Look at this beauty. Wow. Um, kind of browsing for any two stories. Is that 315 one, 330. There's one for 350. So I'm going to assume 315 is what we're gonna be buying a house for. So um, I looked, if, if you scroll down, you can get an idea. Also funny enough, you start seeing the prices are going down. Um, you can get an idea of the monthly payment and the beautiful thing about it is your high property tax are gone because you're using the Homestead Act. Um, and of course, we're putting as much down as possible. So we are estimating a monthly payment about 15 to 1600 smackaroos. So since we're buying a $320,000-ish house, as we can assume, 20% of that would be about $63,000. So let's just hope that we can try to get that price down because now more than ever, and especially in this market, we need to try to negotiate the price as low as possible. So let's just kind of aim high and let's say $65,000 for the down payment. Um, anything, you maybe going to 25% makes sense, um, but really... You want to try to hold on as much as that cash as possible in my opinion i would rather have you know what would that be um hundred and forty thousand dollars in the bank 
as a safety measure and you know or pay off the other debts that you guys have in mind because i know you mentioned which we'll talk about in a bit um i would rather do that than completely put everything into the house and say well i have a really cheap monthly payment but no money in the bank <laughs> um closing costs i mean taxes i've known they're known to have higher closing costs i believe i'm not in taxes so i'm just assuming ten thousand dollars is what i'm gonna guess so you're gonna need about seventy five thousand dollars which um, hate to break it to you, but ten thousand dollars is not going to cut it. So you're going to have to sell. You, unfortunately, you're not being in a position to to rent. Um, if you're looking to do it sooner, uh, you're going to have to sell. If not, you're going to have to save about sixty five thousand dollars to do it comfortably. Why do you need twenty percent down? Well, the reality is you don't own a house. You don't own. You don't have a mortgage payment right now, right? It just makes it. Would, it's just terrible. I would hate to see you let go of your situation with no mortgage and go you get a three percent five percent down house with a super high interest paying three thousand dollars a month and just putting yourself in that position where you're going to pay a lot of money in interest so it just doesn't make sense to me for you to get you rid of that situation and, and you know get yourself into a high low down payment high loan amount high interest situation you're going to need about 75k so you can do that now with your equity so um let's talk about your budget situation so i've already done the favor of um going and and, and plugging in all the numbers that was given to me um on the budget side of things so like i said um we didn't get their exact gross amount but we're assuming using a little math what would things look like um they were fortunate enough to give me the phone number the car insurance a few other uh, bills that i don't have listed here they gave me their car payment and their student loan one thing that's interesting is their car payment uh, oh, sorry, their student loan, I think they owe like 1,447K. Um, and this one, they owe like 17K. Now, once again, guys, these this sheet and many others are available on my website. And they're meant to be, hey, you know, grab them and you can kind of adjust them and add it. So, you know, a lot of people are probably seeing that I'm adding these numbers here. And you're like, what are you doing? That's not inside the box. Yeah, once you have the sheet, you can make a bunch of copies of it. You can just mess with it and, you know, get what you want from it. So and really adjust it to your standards. But anyways, it's worth noting that they owe about 147 and 17K. Um, and I'm also gonna put here that they were, they were making it roughly about, what was it, 200, let's just say 200,000, okay? We're, we're gonna touch base on that later. So roughly right now, what you can afford um, is, so your really safe number, which is 25% of your net income, which, which is the golden standard, is about 1438. Um, this is approximately 30% of your net income. And this is a, a 33, right, right? A third of your net income. Everything after this, the really tight numbers is using the gross numbers. So um, using your net number, it really, you, you I mean, technically you putting 20, 25% down because especially you're using your Homestead Act or whatever it's called, you're in a very, very good position to be in that really safe number. So technically you can do that. However, if we play with the numbers a bit, Okay, you have plenty of leftover savings. Now, of course, you didn't put all your, you gave me your whole budget. So, um, you know, uh, we can't really use this as much, but say we stay around a $1,500 monthly payment. I mean, you're still gonna be 25, 26% of your net income, 20% of your gross income. You're gonna be in a, in a you know, $29, $45 left a month to basically live off of, which is in a really good position. However, okay, here's the thing. The way it's looking, okay, you're going to, with this, uh, to credit, you can do a 20% down conventional loan, which is probably going to be your only option. Um, more the better, but 20, 25% is probably going to be at. And in this position, you're going to have to use your equity unless you really buckle down and you start saving a lot of money in the next, um, essentially, um, you know, year or so. So here's the thing. Just because you can buy a house or upgrade your house doesn't always mean you should. The reality is you it makes perfect sense for you i mean financial sense to buy but there's three motivating reasons why you need to be buying number one is going to be your main motivation like why you're doing this uh you know when i talk about hey i live with my grandpa and you know they're kicking me out of his house and i don't want to be a landlord you know you have really strong moral beliefs about owning where you live and not having someone tell you what you can do with your house that's that's a strong reason 
Hey, I, I need to own, I like to own a, and I have, I'm talking about working with some clients right now that they're strong. Number one is what I call it is a, Hey, we have two, three dogs. We need to make sure they have a giant yard. We don't want to deal with landlords. If our dogs want to poop everywhere, peer, whatever, whatever that number one is, that number one has to be strong. Number two is going to be the financial, which in this case, basically this is the point of these videos is we really evaluate that number two for people financial position, not only your budget, now, not, you know, making sure that your budget makes sense, monthly payment wise, your savings saving situation so you actually have money not only in the bank when you buy but after you buy um, and your your actual income like what how much money you're making and is it going to be stable enough number two is going to be that and number three of course is your investment like it, it could be a potential investment for you to buy a house and like i've said in my previous video as well you can feel free to watch that where i talk about if people should buy a house right now that number three is was the number one reason why people were buying for the past decade and that is no longer the reason people should buy so your number one needs to be so strong that it defies logic. And unfortunately, you gave me all your numbers and your number two, I, I, can, I could say, hey, yeah, you could buy a house with you selling your house. Not only that, you can buy a house, you can make a pretty good dent into your, get rid of your credit card debt, uh, you know, make a good dent into your student debt and, and, and have a house and have a nice cushion of savings. However, not knowing what your number one is, I have to say, don't buy. I mean, unless you give me a really good detailed email about like, hey, this is why I'm buying and this is what needs to happen. And if this doesn't happen, this doesn't happen. And like whatever that case may be, then then yes, 100% go for it. Right now, more than ever in this market, 2022, September and on, I am not evaluating just people's financial position. I'm evaluating, hey, do you absolutely need to get yourself into that risk? Because that number three, guys, not only is it, not only is it like not there anymore, but it could be a risk. It is a slight risk right now, or you could get yourself in a position where you buy a home and property values can continue to go down to a point where you're at a net loss. And of course, you know, my hope is that you're gonna be, because that number one is so strong, you're gonna be in a, in a house for 10, 15, 20 years. So at the end of the day, it really won't affect you other than the fact that you, you picked the timing wrong to buy the house. But at the end of the day, if I don't know what your number one is, I don't know what the reason why you're buying, it's gonna probably be a no for me, even though the financial leg of it is very strong. Once again, your number one has to be so strong that it defies logic. People are gonna say, well, you're dumb for buying. Well, they're not living your life. They're not, they don't, they don't know what's going on with you. So unless I know what that number one is, you're getting rid of a house that you have completely paid off. Um, and you know, I don't know what your situation is in your neighborhood. Do you hate your neighborhood? Do you hate your neighbors? I don't know what's going on there. Um, but if, if there's no super strong reason, Sorry, time to go pick up my kids. If there's no super strong reason that's like really strong that defies logic, it's gonna be a no for me. So of course you didn't know to email that, so I don't blame you, but I'm rather than using your uh, your example to show everyone else, even though it might make sense to buy financially, that one has to be very, very strong. So um, anywho guys, I hope you know that helped. Not only do we have that sheet, but we have a lot of great sheets available on my site, so go and check it out. Also, if you are one of those crazy buyers as we call them, uh, check out homeandmoney.com slash Javier. Uh, links are all in the description for you to go and get, get yourself an agent referral. So what do you guys think? Uh, financial position looks good, but you know, I know my Dave Ramsey heads are going to say don't do it because you're going to get yourself in more debt. But once again, everyone's living their own life. We can only uh, give advice and if they take it or not take it, it's up to them. But looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say. And of course, uh, I'm love, channels been getting a lot of love lately. So I guess you guys are liking the phone call series and stuff like that. So expect more of those soon. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. Have a good one.